Okay. Now, if there's a four pipe configuration and there's a two pipe configuration, what do you get when you average them? And if you average four and two, you get three. So here's a three pipe buffer. And this is actually one of my favorites. Uh, it has the advantage that you can still go direct to load from your heat source. If your load is on and your heat source is on at the same time, we have the same detail up here on the supply side as we had with the two pipe buffer. So we can go directly to the load and also um, the flow that goes through the tank down here now, we have the load coming back and instead of coming down here, it goes into the bottom of the tank. I, I really like this buffer configuration for a heat pump. If you're doing a geothermal heat pump, uh, water to water, or you're doing an air to water heat pump, this is, this is a really good uh, configuration for the tank because what this does is it ensures that you're always engage the thermal mass. Okay, you always, uh, anytime that load is on or the heat source is on, there's going to be flow going through that tank. So if you're going to control the heat source based on room thermostats rather than tank temperature, uh, don't, don't do a two pipe, do a three pipe buffer. We can still get good hydraulic separation with this. Okay. And uh, again, the flow that goes through the tank is going to be the difference between the heat source flow rate and at least up here, it's going to be um, in the upper portion of that tank, we're going to have lower flow velocities. Um, again, keep those headers. I, I use the term short and fat. We want those headers and where those T's are here and down here. Actually, this, this, um, um, yeah, keep those headers as close to the tank as possible. Here's a couple example systems. Uh, the one on the left is using a boiler. All right, so we can set up a ModCon boiler and we can go into a three pot bu buffer as it's shown. Uh, we've got an air separator. I'm, I'm showing it on a vertical line just to show you there's options. And we're going up to a nice array here of panel rads, maybe some floor heating circuits and a towel warmer. Uh, we're using home run circuits with either half inch packs, half inch tubing of any sort. And we've got a manifold. And to what really caps this off as a nice complement is a variable speed pressure regulated circulator. So that circulator could be set for constant differential pressure and it'll simply uh, ramp up and down as these thermostatic valves open and close. We, we actually talked about this kind of a distribution system uh, on our first uh, installment of uh, these webinars. Um, and it, it's a simple system, it works really well. Uh, this is the exact same distribution system just tied into an air to water heat pump, okay? You do see I'm, I'm showing a check valve in both of these. The reason that check valve is there is when the heat source is off and the tank is warm, what we don't wanna have happen is warm water migrating over here, cooling off and becoming denser. When, when water cools down, it becomes denser and it will sink and it'll flow backwards through the heat source and just dump some of the heat that's in the thermal storage tank into the heat source. And you know it doesn't harm anything, but it's wasting energy. It's wasting energy that you put into that buffer tank. So you need some method and a spring check is, is really a very simple way to do that um, as opposed to um, a motorized valve. A, a motorized valve could work, but it's, it's definitely more expensive uh, and potentially more prone to, to problems over years of service compared to a simple spring-loaded check valve. Okay, so here is the, a similar idea. We've got three pipe buffers. Oh, actually, I misspoke. This is a four pipe buffer. This could be, for example, the Argosy tank where we're feeding with a heat pump we're pulling the cool water out of the bottom. Uh, we're going into our heat pump. I, I like to always have a dirt separator of some sort in there. And today with a high efficiency permanent magnet rotors and circulators, I like a magnetic dirt separator. And there's several of those on the market, okay? Uh, what that's going to do is clean up that flow if there's any uh, dirt in it or magnetic particles before they go inside the heat pump. And then we're putting that heat back into the tank 
And uh, the Argosy tank does have a nice inch and a quarter takeoff up on the top. So we're pulling the, the hottest water directly off the top of that tank. This is the hottest water in the tank. Showing another separator here, air and dirt separator. And we've got a couple pathways. We've got a variable speed pressure regulated circulator going off to some zone valves. Uh, again, this could be going off to other valve based zoning like thermostatic radiator valves. And then the other load is what we talked about last week. That would be the on-demand domestic water system where uh, when you draw hot water from a fixture, a flow switch would turn on a circulator and that's gonna take the hot water from the top of the tank, push it down through the primary side of the heat exchanger. As cold domestic water goes up the other side of that heat exchanger. And I'm showing here a tankless electric water heater as a boost. Um, if it's a heat pump, we're probably not gonna get this tank up hot enough to provide 100% of our domestic water. Possible, but we're gonna take a performance penalty to do that. If it were a boiler instead of a heat pump, you could easily uh, get keep this tank at a temperature that's high enough to provide 100% of your domestic water through this heat exchanger, and you could eliminate the electric tankless. Now, over here on the right, same basic idea. The only thing that's changed, I'm using a tank type electric uh, water heater as our final temperature boost. Again, assuming we have a heat pump over here, we might only be maintaining the buffer based on outdoor reset control. So we're going to need, uh, we're only gonna get a preheating effect through our stainless steel heat exchanger. We're gonna need something to top it off. So either of these is an option with a heat pump. If it were a ModCon boiler, uh, you could probably eliminate this or eliminate the electric tank and s simply make sure the buffer tank is warm enough to provide 100% of your domestic hot water.